couple of days after the referendum, I made what appeared to be at the time a foolish mistake of being the first Labour MP to say we needed a second referendum. Um, and I think at the time it was myself and Caroline Lucas. The Lib Dems actually came a little bit later. Uh, it was the loneliest place I've ever been in my life. But I knew then, and it was not to say that all Leave voters, Leave voters were um, xenophobic, racist, or hard right, but it was to say that much of the Leave campaign was driven by actors who were absolutely in that place. Uh, and so, obviously, as of now, I am delighted that because of your efforts, marches, campaigning, not mourning after losing, but organising and fighting, we are where we are today. And all credit to you and so many others for what is a moment where victory may just be within our grasp. Uh, but it is also to say that um, you have seen how pulling um, progress from Labour <laughs> and the Labour front bench has been and has felt over the last few months. And if reports today are right, and I don't know if they're right because I don't sit around that cabinet table, there were lots of voices on the front bench that mirrored the voices that we heard in the Parliamentary Labour Party from people like John Mann and Caroline Flint saying this was a catastrophic mistake, that we were betraying um, Leave voters um, in, um, in Leave seats, Labour seats, um, and try to push Jeremy, if you like, to shift position. So the pressure and the campaigning has to continue, and we've got to meet all those arguments. Joe's absolutely right. Since when, when a manifesto is defeated as a general election, does it become the Bible on which you stand? Never. And some might say manifestos on when you win a general election uh, 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 don't always remain the Bible, but certainly ones that you, you lose, that is not the case. And there have, there's lots of historic precedent for that. But most importantly, I remember going into that general election campaign. And I remember some of these same MPs and others, and others, saying that Labour was going to lose a swathe of seats in the North. And they would say it quite convincingly to MPs like me. And so I made it my business during the general election to travel the country. I spent a lot of time in Yorkshire, the Northeast, the Northwest, knocking on those doors to get my own sense of what was happening. And it became clear to me that just because people, some had voted UKIP, and some in the referendum had voted Leave, in a general election, they were happy to come back to the Labour Party. And it's the same sort of line that's being peddled now that somehow the voters aren't sophisticated enough to make judgments on the basis of the election in front of them. Um, but it's also to say that my view is that Labour has to meet the arguments and the party of Keir Hardy cannot ever support a Brexit that is basically a Tory Brexit, that's Thatcherite, Thatcherism on steroids, that would break our economy, heavily deregulate our economy, and the only medium long-term strategy for this country is to sit off the coast of the EU, a bit like Switzerland or a modern sort of Singapore. Um, that would be great if you've got money. It might be okay if you're upper middle class, but my God, it will be shocking for people who are working class and poor in this country.